to combat the effects of the Great Recession and reignite economies, central banks from all around the world lowered interest rates and even quote-unquote printed money. For example, at the height of its quantitative easing program, the Federal Reserve printed as much as $85 billion per month. Many observers therefore expected problematically high inflation, yet as we now know, this didn't happen. Why? Because there is more to the equation than just creating money. A lot depends on what happens next. As an extreme example, the Federal Reserve can even print $100 trillion, but if the entire amount is given to Steve and he just buries it in his very large backyard, there won't be any inflationary effect because all that currency won't be chasing products or services if it's just buried somewhere. The same way, 1. A lot of the currency created by the Federal Reserve ended up being held as reserves in the banking system rather than in the hands of the average individual. And 2. Quite a bit was also directly or indirectly used to buy various assets such as bonds or shares, and as such, asset prices rather than consumer prices went up, or if you will, we can consider it an asset price inflation rather than consumer price inflation scenario. As can be seen, it's all a matter of, well, following the money. The bottom line is this. The more money actually ends up in the hands of those who use it to consume, the greater the effect is likely to be in terms of consumer price inflation. As such, there is a world of difference between printing 85 billion monthly so as to provide liquidity to the banking sector and or support asset prices and, let's say, handing out that amount to citizens instead. 